Hi, my name is Donitra Quigley, and I am a math teacher here at North Atlanta High School. Today, I will be presenting some instructions on how to navigate the Big Ideas Learning Platform. So, if you go into Big Ideas, you can get there through my backpack. And in my backpack, you'll see this icon here that says Big Ideas Math. Big Ideas Math is used for high school math, so specifically Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry. Um, it has been purchased by the district already. So I'm gonna go into my Algebra 1 class. I'm sorry for whatever this looks like. But I'm gonna go into my Algebra 1 class. Um, up here, if you go over to Class Management, this is where all your students will be automatically loaded into the system. So if you're already in my backpack, um, it automatically loads into Big Ideas if you are an Algebra 1, Algebra 2, or Geometry teacher in Atlanta Public Schools. So here you can see my classes that I have. If I click on this Algebra 1 class, then all of my students' names populate. If I'm looking for someone in particular, then I can go over here to where it says students, and I can search for them in the search bar here. And then I can find, you know, if they are missing an assignment, what's been assigned to them already. These are the books that are available to them. But I'm really getting ahead of myself. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and just let you know that if you click on dashboard. This is where you'll see all of the units for whichever math you're teaching. So as I mentioned, this is Algebra 1, and there are eight units in this Big Ideas platform. These are the same units that are part of the district standards. Um, so then if I go into Unit 1 or Unit 2, we're currently in Unit 2 for writing linear equations and inequalities. Over to this left, you see this menu bar, and it tells you you can go in to do lesson plans, resources, you can create assessments and assignments, and it also has a copy of the teacher's book. So if I click on that, then you can see all of the sections that are within this chapter. You can see about the pacing of it. You can use that or not if that works for you and your team. And then if I scroll to the left over here a little bit, then it'll take me to the standards that we have and the learning targets that are for this particular unit. If I continue to scroll down a little bit more, um, then it takes me to the actual unit itself. And then in here, it shows you some examples. It gives you uh, like your lesson step by step. And then if I continue to scroll down, then you can see some of the word problems. Sorry, I went a little too far. So if I continue to scroll down, you can see some of the word problems that they give as well. So the teaching edition is in the platform. You don't have to have a physical copy of it. And the students have access to this book as well. So I can't show it from the student view, but the students also have access to this book. If you are in class and you want to teach from the Big Ideas platform, click on Dynamic Classroom. In Dynamic Classroom, if I go to the beginning of this lesson, so let's say I'm in chapter two, <clears throat> excuse me, and then I want to start the lesson for the day. If you look at where it says Lori's notes, notice that this looks just like the teaching edition book. So see this TE over here that's saying it's the teacher's edition. If you click the little next tab at the bottom, it goes on to describe what this chapter is all about. If you click on the next tab, it shows you where our students, what have students have learned before and what they're going to learn moving forward through this unit. Scroll down and keep going. So this is everything that I was just showing you in the book. If I continue to move on back over here on this left tab, um, I click on 2.1 and it says writing equations in slope intercept form. If you click on the plus, the plus sign with the folder where it says warm up, then choose one of the warm ups, then it gives you the warm up question for the day. And students can just go off and do that. On this side over here, if you're using your box light or Promethean board, notice here this little spot, there's a little person with a, a stick or if you will. And if you click on that, it enlarges so that it fills up the entire screen. So this is really good for when you wanna do a warm up in class. You can go through it together with your students, click on the plus button, and it shows the answers to see if they're right or not. Scroll down to the bottom, and you can just go to the next thing. They usually have two 
Sometimes I use both of them. Most of the time I just use one and then use the next one the next day. Explore it goes into, you know, here are learning targets. This is what we want to learn today. And then you can work with a partner. So it's kind of an extended warm up and it's a really good way to get people thinking and talking about um, what you're about to learn. So it's a one of those spaces where the students can start wherever they are. They don't have an excuse. They can start wherever they are. So you can do the explore it if you'd like, and then you can move into an, some examples. Notice here that this example is completely worked all the way through. And then you could see another one if you'd like, or you can click on stepped out and then talk it through with them and click a little bit at a time. And it'll show you one step after the next step after the next step, or they could watch a video and do it. So you can assign these different things. So this lesson goes all the way through the entire thing. If you wanna give a quick self-assessment, you can click start and it shows the questions. Students can answer them together in class. They can put in their answer, like for this one, write an equation and slope is seven, y intercept is two. So y equals my slope is seven x um, plus two. And then they can check to see if they got it right or not. So if they didn't, you can have a conversation about why that, that happened. So I'm gonna exit out of this. Again, that continues to go through the entire lesson. You can look through the teacher's edition to see what you want to teach on the big screen or not. And then if you're ready to give them some practice from that section, you can go in here and create assignments. So notice it says practice. Over here in practice, if you click it, then it will take you to this activity library. So a lot of the assignments and the practice that's already in the textbook and in the workbook, the consumable workbook, is preset in Big Ideas. And you can select any one of these, like if I chose this one, then I can open it and take a look to see what those exercises are like much like that self-assessment question. I can take a look to see if I like those questions. I can add those questions or take them away or just assign the whole thing to students. If I choose to assign it, then I can pick my class. So over here, if I wanted that class, if I wanted everyone to do all of these problems, then I would click all students. If not everybody was here or someone had was absent and I just want like a couple of kids to take it, then I can choose whoever I want. If I have the same class, like I have more than one Algebra 1 class, so that I can go over here to where it says add class, pick another class, click apply, go over to that class, and then choose more students. Then if I were to scroll down some, notice it says apply to all classes. So I can apply it for today at this time, they have until tomorrow at this time to get it done, apply that to everybody, or I can change that time. This says release for review on submission. So when the students are done, then they can see what their score is. If they are late or absent, then this says, okay, I will allow late assignments to happen. I usually use this release by teacher or prevent late submissions when I'm giving a test in Big Ideas or a quiz because I don't want them to see their, I don't want them to be able to access their answers and questions once they've submitted it. And I don't want any late submissions. So then that's when I do this and I can apply that to everybody's class or I can apply it to this class and not the other one. Down here, it gives me access to Desmos if you want them to have a calculator. If they are doing Desmos with graphing, then give them the graphing calculator. If there's no graphing at all, maybe they just need a scientific calculator. You can make adjustments. You can also let them try the problems multiple times, like maybe you wanna do it four times or five times or three times. I think five is the maximum. And then this also gives them this great video with tutors. They can retry problems, they can look at examples. It's just a wonderful resource. Again, if you're taking a test, then we don't want any of this. We don't want them to be able to see examples. They can't check it, they can't have tutors. You can take all of that away. And then if you are giving a test or a quiz and it is to you know, more than one class at a time, like I have a gifted roster and students who are not gifted all in one class. So then I want them all to take it at the same time. So I would have these two classes 
selected. And then I could say, well, scramble the question. So if they're trying to look on somebody else's monitor, then they won't be looking at the same question. So I love that as a security feature in Big Ideas. So once you're all done, you can save it and then you can assign it to the class. I'm just gonna click cancel because I don't wanna assign that to anyone. So you can choose assignments that are already set up or you can create your own. If I want to go to create my own, I would click user created. And then over here, I would choose which program I'm using. So we are using Georgia 2024. And then you would choose your book. So again, I'm in algebra one. I also teach algebra two. Um, so if I were choosing and notice that it has the algebra one, geometry and advanced algebra two. So if I were choosing big ideas for algebra one, I would select this and then I was just looking at chapter two, so then I would select that. And then maybe I just want to give an assignment from the writing equations and slope intercept form that we just did. So then I would choose that. Then I would go to create activity. I just want them to practice, click on create, and then you come to this screen. Here, you're gonna have to choose again. So I still want the big ideas algebra one, but I don't want chapter one, I want chapter two. And then I want, lesson 2.1, and then you click apply. Once you click apply, all of your options come up. So the options come from these exercise sets. So everything that they have in the textbook, you can select here. If you just want them to do a self-assessment, practice exercises one through 33, just the review and refresh section, whatever section you want. So if I want them to do some practice exercises from one to 33, that I'm gonna choose that. And again, make sure you click apply so that those problems are the ones that pop up in this section here. In this section, I'm gonna choose whichever problems I want them to do. And maybe I just want those three from that page and I'm gonna click add those three. That pops up over here. Then I can go to the next page. If you do not click add before you go to the next page, it will erase all of that beautiful work that you just selected. So be sure to click add then choose whatever you want from this next section and click add. Go over here where it says activity title, change that to whatever you want it to be. Um, slope, so I'll just put slope example. And then you can double check this here, You know, make sure that those answers all look right and it's what you expected. If you're like, oh no, I didn't want that one, you can remove this one if you, um, if you're good with everything that's there, click save it, and then I'll click save, and then you can click assign. And then again, that takes you back to that page where all of your students are, all of your classes are, and you can assign it to whoever you want at what time and date and all that good stuff again. So that's how you assign work from the text. Again, that's how you create assignments as well. This is how you navigate through Dynamic Classroom. In resources, if you were to select resources and choose your math, so I'll pick algebra one, and then whatever unit you're looking at, we'll stick with writing linear functions. If you just stay with that, you can check to see all of these resources available to you. You can browse by chapter and section, or you can browse by the entire resource. One of the resources that I love to put in Google Classroom is this family letter. It comes in English and Spanish. So the family letter, let's see, I was in chapter two, chapter resources, family letter. So notice it comes in English and Spanish. You can download that. It's a great description of the unit of the chapter. It tells parents and families all about what's happening with that chapter and what they can expect. It's a beautiful resource to add to Google Classroom. In here, there's also the teaching edition again. It's the student edition. So if you want to see what the students are going to see, what their book looks like, this is where you can see that, the student edition. This text, test prep and practice workbook, that's the consumable workbook that the students have. So we usually have enough of those for everyone. But if you don't, then this is where you would pull that book. Notice this says end of course test work here. That's because I did not select a chapter. So Big Ideas is thinking that I want, I'm at the end of the year and it wants everything to be reviewed. 
So this is a great review when it comes time for March and we're getting ready for the end of the year. But if I'm looking at my chapter specifically and that one unit within that one section within the unit, then again, I can go into lesson plans. I can look at the answers to the book questions. That's helpful. Um, I can look at the worked out solutions. So scroll down and you can click on that PDF and it shows you every problem that's in the book and in the workbook. And it shows how it's worked out step by step if you get lost or confused on something. It's really a great resource. There are digital resources and everything that you need in here is, is a great resource. This assessments tab is where you can find tests that are already created. Okay, so that concludes my example of Big Ideas Learning Platform. Again, Atlanta Public Schools has purchased this platform for Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry. The district also has provided assessments within Big Ideas from the 23-24 school year. So you can go in there and look back at those if you need them. If not, then you can also create your own assessment, as I mentioned and showed earlier. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much.